Let's get sure. to my next guest who says, despite the stronger than expected GDP numbers last week, a lot more internal data are pointing to a slowdown here in the U.S. economy. Joining with more on the markets, geopolitical risk, uh, we'll, we'll just cover it all. Uh, is hedge fund manager Kyle Bass. He's the founder and chief investment officer of Heyman Capital Management. Kyle, it's good to see you again. Welcome. Good to see you too, Kelly. Thanks. So I guess we should take a step back and say um, most significantly for what you think investment wise, we're capping off a month that, you know, gold's been up and oil's kind of uh, elevated, um, things like that. What, what does this all come down to? If you're bearish, where do you think we're going and what does that mean for kind of how people should be invested right now? I mean, it's important just to just to I guess, separate what's real and and, uh, and what's nominal and, and the difference is whatever inflation that's been reported, if you just look at look at a few things, uh, like the average cost of a soda in the U.S. is up 45% in the last three years. Um, the U.S. FHFA's own housing price index is up 45% in the last three years. We printed, we expanded our balance sheets at the Fed. We created 40% more broad money in the U.S. and exported that not only to U.S. consumers, but to the rest of the world. So I think we've had about 40% inflation in the last two or two and a half, three years. So when we think about what was real and what was, uh, again, what was nominal, those are two different things. And, and uh, that kind of inflation, as you just saw in the prior report talking about McDonald's, uh, you know, moving up because they're able to move price. Yeah. The, the fact that wages haven't moved with the price level is something that we're going to be battling now, where we're going to see wages continuing to move higher, as we see in the auto worker strike and the UPS strike and, and the others, uh, versus uh, uh, trying to catch up to where the price level is. So I, so I think that's that's the real problem the administration has and the Fed has right now. And that certainly spells profit margin squeeze for earnings. So if I if I <laughs> if I said which would you rather, stocks or bonds, right now, you can only pick one. Um, would you? I mean, wh which one is it? Well, I mean, if it's right now and not for the next ten years, I'd, I'd surely pick bonds. I mean, you know, the, if you look at the U.S. curve whether you're on the front end or the back end of the curve, you're all right around 5%, plus or minus 20 basis points. And, you know, look, if you move the price level 45% in a, in a couple of years, can you get a print that's a year-over-year -year print that's down? Of course you can. If you moved it from, let's say, let's say it was at 100 pre-pandemic, and now it's at 145, just generically as a price level, could you get a 143 print? I sure hope so. Uh, and that's when the Fed and the team will victory lap and say, oh, we got inflation under control. But the new price level is still 143, and we're going to move higher now. We're going to look for 2% inflation. Right? That's, the, that is the, that's the insidious nature of inflation and the Fed and the Treasury. So, you know, this year we're going to run a 7.5% of GDP deficit. Mm -hmm. Another way of saying we have $6 trillion of expenditures and we'll only make, we're only going to bring in $4 trillion. I mean, our politicians have lost their mind. No, but we've that's never we've never run a deficit like that. In, that's a non-wartime deficit at full employment.